Hello? Anybody out there? Can you hear me? Whoa! Oh, there you are. Hi, my name is Slick, and I'm here to talk to you about Tucson Water. Whoa! Oh, there you are. This is my little cousin, Splash. She's visiting from out of town. Oh, hi kids, how are you? Cousin Slick, you promised you were going to show me how water is used in the desert. Yes, come on, follow me as I take my friends on a journey into the world of Tucson water. Hi. Kids, are you ready? Yay! Let's go. And remember, don't be afraid to get wet. Rain in the Sonoran Desert is wonderful, isn't it? We need rain and it helps plants and animals to survive. But here in Tucson, it doesn't rain very often. And our rainstorms don't last very long. Whoa, this is great. Is this a river? This is a wash. A wash is a dry creek that temporarily fills with water during a storm. Yay! When water flows across the Earth's surface, it's called runoff. Right after a storm, runoff can quickly fill up a wash. We call this a flash flood. Flash floods can be dangerous, so remember kids, never play near or in a wash during a storm. Where's the water going so quickly? Well, much of the water rushes down the washes and rivers that are all around Tucson. Some of the water that falls during a storm returns up to the sky. When water from the earth heats up and returns up into the sky, we call that process... Evaporation? That's right, little cousin. Kids, can you say evaporation? Evaporation! Evaporation, right. Water evaporates and rises into the sky in the form of a gas. We can't see it again until it cools off and begins to form little drops. These tiny drops all come together and form... Clouds? Awesome, cuz! This process of clouds forming is called condensation. Can you say condensation? Condensation! Condensation happens when water vapor changes into liquid water. And then, let me guess, we fell back down to the ground during the next storm. Oh my, the work of a drop is never done. You're right, Splash. That's why it's called the water cycle. But there's even more to our water cycle. Water that doesn't evaporate back into the air slowly seeps down into the ground. Oh no! Wait till my mom sees me all muddy. She won't believe where I've been. Making a mud pie? Or playing inside one. Well, kinda. We are underground. Imagine a giant cake. When you slice into it, you see all the different layers. It's the same with the earth. Some of the underground layers are thick, some are thin, some are rocky, and others sandy. In some places underground, there is enough space between the rocks and sand to hold water. These tiny places are called pore spaces. Some underground layers have lots of connecting pore spaces, so they can hold lots of water. These layers are called aquifers. Can you say aquifer? Aquifer! Great! So splash! Do you know what we call the underground water that fills the spaces between grains of sand and gravel? Uh, groundwater? Exactly. You're getting there, little drop. And it takes a very long time for drops of water like us to seep down from the surface of the earth through all the layers to join the aquifer. Once we get down here, we can be trapped for a long, long time. Like me. Why? 
I haven't seen the surface for many, many years. Yeah, but because we get so little rain here in the desert, keeping water in the aquifer is important. We need to be sure the rainwater has a chance to become groundwater and continue to refill the aquifer. Why? Because, little cousin, groundwater is a very important source of water for all of us who live in Tucson. Before we can use the groundwater that is trapped deep down in the earth, we have to bring it back up to the surface. This is done by pumping up the water through wells. Listen, they must be drilling another well now. What's a well? A well is a hole that's dug deep down into the earth using a big, powerful drilling machine. Sections of pipe are inserted down into the well to line the inside of the hole. Water is pumped up through the well. Come on, let's follow the water back up. To the surface? Not yet. First, we have to travel through pipes under the city. After the water is pumped up from a well, it travels from bigger pipes to smaller ones and into our homes, schools, and businesses. So, does all of Tucson's water come from underground? Good question, cuz. These days, we also use water from the Colorado River. Wow, isn't the Colorado River very far away? It is, but we bring it to Tucson through a long canal called the Central Arizona Project. Then, that water gets mixed with our groundwater in the aquifer and it's pumped back up. So, the water kids drink in Tucson is a mixture of Colorado River water and groundwater? That's right! See how precious our water is? It takes lots of effort to bring the water all the way from the Colorado River. And, using too much groundwater lowers the water levels in our aquifer. That is why water conservation is so important. Can you say conservation? Conservation! Hey Slick, can water be reused? Yes, and we do. It's called reclaimed water, and it's another source of water that we can use. Reclaimed water? Yes, that's another word for recycled water. Tucson Water takes the water we use and cleans it up enough to be reused to water plants at schools, parks, and golf courses. But we don't drink reclaimed water. But what can kids in Tucson do to conserve water? Yay! Kids in Tucson take short showers. They turn off the water when brushing their teeth or washing their hands. Cool. Conserving water means that you are water smart. That's right. Now, the next time you turn on a faucet, you'll know exactly where your water came from and what happened to it along the way. And you'll know why water conservation is so important here in the Sonoran Desert. Now, let's go back to your classroom to learn more about how we use water in Tucson and how we can all be water smart. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.